Let's begin. This the chapter or volume is days gone by. This is not good. Guns are getting shot. The cop car. I don't think he's from around here. I think that's a safe bet. When they opened that prison in Grant County. I didn't think we'd be getting their runoffs. I ain't going back. I'll die first. Damn it. Backup's probably more than 10 miles away. We're sitting ducks behind this car. Cover me. I'm going to try to make it. Make it to that ditch so we can surround him. The criminal shoots the gun out of Shane's hand. Rick! Rick is shot in the top or upper right torso. <gasps> Rick is, is wakes up in a hospital bed. He gets rid of his nose plugs, I don't know what they're called. Rick, Rick tries to get out of the bed but falls over. Nurse! Rick pull, hits the buzzer, but nothing happens. Rick goes to the drawer and pulls out uh, his uh, keys and shirt and stuff. Rick gets out of his bed and starts walking out of the hall. Hello? Hello? Anybody? What the hell? Did everyone just decide to take a break at the same time? Rick's walking through the hallways and goes to the elevator. He opens the door. Walker, Walker flops out. Ah! Help! Somebody help! Anybody! Rick sees a door that's that has a board and handles. What the hell? What happened here? Rick opens the door. The room, there's a room full of walkers. Uh, 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 oof. Rick falls over. He crawls backwards. Stop! Get away from me! Can't you understand? Please! Rick's pushed out of the door and falls back on his back. The walker pushes him down the flight of steps. Dur during the uh, tumble, the walker breaks, snaps his neck. Oof! Rick goes to another door and ties the, his belt around the door handles to keep the walkers away. What the hell is all that? Rick is in a parking lot. Trying to go to the car. Damn. The door won't open. Rick is seen walking out of the hospital. Jesus. There's a car with a walker. Uh, not a walker. A dead person's body out there. Rick's walking down the road. <gasps> There is a bike. There's a there's a walker who's looks like he's been starved near a, next to a bicycle. <coughs> the sight of the walker makes Rick cry. Rick takes the bike. Oh God! Rick falls to his knees and starts to cry. Rick gets back on his bike and wipes his tears away. Rick cycles down the road. Rick stops at a house. Son of a bitch. He goes inside the house. He sees there that his family is not there. Nothing. Clang. Rick is hit in the head by hit in the back of the head with a shovel. Dad! Jesus shit, son, what did you do? He was going to try to eat us, Dad. No, son. This man is alive. Oh. Grab his feet. Help me get him inside. Rick wakes up. Huh? Oh, you're awake. We're just getting ready to have dinner. Would you care to join us? Wait, what the hell is going on here? Oh, sorry about my boy. He hit you over the head of a shovel. Huh? What are you talking about? He thought you were one of those things. Things? You mean those monsters? They're at the hospital? Who the- who are you people? What the hell's going on? Whoa, whoa, calm down there, buddy. This is all just a misunderstanding. My boy didn't mean nothing. How did it all happen? What went wrong? Wait a minute, hold up. Damn, son. 
You don't know about any of it? I was shot. I woke up in the hospital when I was attacked. I came home. My wife and kid were gone. The whole damn town was deserted. I didn't know what the hell was going on. You say nobody knows what caused it? All media shut down after a few weeks. I haven't heard much of anything after that. They found a way to stop it. They haven't made it here yet. Those things are everywhere. A good blow to the head will take him out. That's why the boy whacked you for a shovel. Nothing much else seems to phase them. Any, anytime one wanders onto the yard, we take care of it. We try to keep quiet. They'd come after us if they knew we, we was here. Because they stopped broadcasting, they told us to relocate to the bigger cities. They said they could protect us all there. I figured it'd be better off taking my chances here. My in-laws live in Atlanta. That's only a five-hour drive from here. That's probably where the, my wife went. Thank God. They're protecting the cities, man. I was so worried. Oh yeah, I'm sure they're fine. Well, I need a car. If I'm going to get to Atlanta. Want to go shopping? You're a cop, huh? Yep. I figured for you for a hunter after you said you got shot and all. You being a cop, you don't mind my boy and I taking residence in your neighborhood, neighbor's place, do you? I'm not going to arrest you, that's what you mean. Most of the houses on the street have been looted. You seem to be fixing the place up. The Thompsons will probably thank you when they get back. As long as you don't put up a fire over the place. It's not like we're stealing the, it's not like we're stealing the place. Your neighborhood just seems safer. We don't figure that we're hurting anybody by standing there. In my book, that makes it okay. You don't have to justify anything to me. You're keeping your son safe. I'm already sick about mine. I understand. I appreciate that. You know, I don't think I got your name. Rick. Officer Rick Grimes at your service. And you? Oh, Morgan Jones. And this here is Lil Dwayne. You're a good man, Morgan. I really appreciate you driving me over here. You helped me out a lot. It's worth it just to get to talk to somebody. If it ain't about cartoons or passing gas, my boy don't want to talk about it. Eh. Damn. After everything I've seen today, I feel guilty for laughing. Hey man, it's okay. You've seen some crazy shit out there. We all have. You can't let it get to your head. Get to you. You just gotta keep going. You can't stop to think about it or you'll go crazy. Yeah. What's up with that? Oh, this... I figure I might as well bring a few along, just in case. Speaking of which, follow me. I just need to find the rock key. Here we are. Wow. Grab a couple of yours for yourself. If whacking these things over the head with a shovel does them in, I'm sure these things will work. Should save you some effort. The shells are in the cabinet below the gun rack. Make sure you save some for me. I'll be right back. Can I? No, damn it. Don't touch anything. But I'm old enough. Yes, you are. And I'm going to teach you how to use one of them tomorrow. But until then, they're off limits. Are, are there enough shells for both of us in there? Well, that getup certainly suits you. I keep a spare uniform in my locker. I figured if I was going into a big city and they got a ton of people holed up there, I could get around easier being a cop, so I might as well look the part. Grab what you're getting and follow me out back. I got another surprise for you. You take that one on the left. It doesn't run as good as the one I'm taking, but it'll run better than that hatchback you're driving. If I'm going to make it all the way to Atlanta, I'm going to need to going to need the newer one. Wait, what? You'll be safer in one of these things if you need to go anywhere. But ah, uh, don't sweat it, man. I'm just doing my job. I can't think of a better way to protect and serve under the circumstances. Things get back to normal, you have to give it back, so try not to bang it up or put too many miles on it. Thank you, Rick. I can tell you how much this will help us. You've already helped. Clink. What was that? Look out! <coughs> the walker on the fence. <coughs> Rick aims his gun at it. No! Leave it be. It can't get to us in here. You may need that boy later. Yeah, you're right. Better get these cars out of here before it makes its way around to the gate. 
I'll see you around. Of course, we're neighbors. Keep an eye on my house for me. Will do. Morgan leaves in the car. Rick leaves and locks the gate. Rick stops. Stops on the road. He goes back to the goes back to the walker next to the bikes that was next to the bicycle. <laughs> Rick shoots in the head. Rick rubs his tears away, then gets back in his car and drives off to the distance. We see Rick driving down the highway and sees him go past the Georgia sign. Welcome to Georgia sign. Rick's at a gas station. God damn it, not again. Kicks the gas pump. Looks back at the walk, uh, the dead, I guess a dead body in the car. Rick's on the road, and his cop car runs out of gas. Damn it. Takes his duffel bag, starts walking. Huh? Rick sees a farmhouse, and decides to go towards it. Basically, he's knocking the door. I didn't. I can do the sound effect. Sorry. Anybody home? I'm coming in. I'm not here to hurt or rob you. I just need some gasoline. <clears throat> Rick goes in the room and sees a family of dead of people. Rick runs out the house and pukes. While doing so, Rick notices a barn. Boarded. He goes in. Hello? Rick sees a horse. Hey, girl. They leave you in here all alone? I'm sure, I'm sure could use your help if you're interested. I'm trying to get to Atlanta to see my wife and son. You ever been to Atlanta? It's not really that far away. You mind if I take this? I think it might come in handy. Rick picks up the hatchet on the table. You ready, girl? Let's go. Slow down, girl. I know you've been in the barn for a while, but you're going to wear yourself out. Whoa! That's better. I don't want you passing out before we get there. So, got a name? No, that's a good idea. Talk about the happiest day of my life. I'll surely get my mind off of the mess of shit I've seen recently. I had just gone, in, gone into the work that morning. Now I was sitting in my station drinking my second cup of coffee for the day. Hillary was telling me about the drunk they brought in the night before. Then the call came. It was my wife, Lori. The water broke in not ten minutes after I left. I grabbed my coat and ran home to get her. Got Hillary to call Doc Stevens so he can meet up at the hospital. I got her to the hospital without a hitch. One of the only times I got to use the sirens on my car. It was a small town we lived in. I held her hand the whole time. There were some complications, and she had to get us a Caesarean. I was really worried, but everything went okay. First time I laid my eyes on little Carl, I, you know, on second thought, thinking about the good times made makes all this seem so much worse. Here we are. <sighs> Shit! Come on, girls, get the hell out of here! Shit! 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 Ah! Ooh. Rick falls off the horse. <coughs> oh God! Shit! Rick puts a hatchet in a walker. Ugh! Son of a bitch! All the walkers are eating the horse. Bastards! What the hell is wrong with you? Rick shoots at the walkers. <coughs> Dunk. Rick decapitates one of them with his hatchet. He runs into the alleyway. Look. Someone grabs Rick. I can get you out of here. Follow me. And stop using that gun. You'll have the whole city on us. Don't worry about them. We'll be long gone before they get down here. Stay there. Guy on the first try. The Glenn. He's that's Glenn, by the way. Pulls down the ladder. Come on, man. I'm trying to save your life here. What are you waiting on? Sorry. Just, I've never seen so many of them. Then you're a lucky man. 
That's nothing down there. Had you gone 50 more feet into the city before they attacked, you, were, you would not be here right now. What? Come on, we must hurry. Wait! Blood Nick's roof jump. No, no way in hell. You're gonna have to. Listen, it's easy. I do it all the time. When we climb down this building, those things all... These things still will be waiting for us at the bottom of that building. There's no way out of that that one. All these buildings are filled with zombies. Trust me. God damn it. Rick tries to jump. Oof. He barely makes it. Jesus, man. You should have thrown the double bag over first. Now you tell me. We've got to hurry before they spread out again. When we climb down this building, be ready to run. Don't worry. We don't have to far to go. We're not in the clear yet. This building is close to the woods, the edge of the city. We've got to run about a block before we get to them. There's liable to be a few of those things in the way. As long as we keep moving, though, they shouldn't be able to surround us. Those things are slow as hell, so you should be able to maneuver around them. Don't use your gun, and don't let them touch you. One, one bite, it's all over for you. Got it. This way. From this point on... On is where we need to be careful. Gotcha. It's not far now. Heads up. I don't even see it. You're going to have to keep your eyes open, man. We've, where have you been for the past month? Coma. Seriously? Yeah, I woke up in the hospital yesterday. I... Can we stop here? Is it safe? For a minute. What you said about the city earlier. How dangerous it is. Where are all the people? That were there. That that was them trying to eat us back there. You can't go into the cities anymore. Everyone that was there is dead. The government tried to hurt everyone into the city so we'd be easier to protect. All that did was put all the food in one place. Every time one of those things kills, one of us will become one of them. It took a week for just about everyone in the city to be killed. After that, we didn't know nobody can get nobody can get in or out. Did you have family in there? My wife. My son. I'm sorry, man. I hate for you you to have to hear that it this way. We were from Kentucky, but when I was told people were or ordered to large cities, I figured my wife was taking my son to her parents' place. Here in Atlanta, they may not have come, but I don't know where else they'd be. Don't give up hope, man. I've seen all kinds of people that have survived some crazy shit. You got a guy at camp that actually made it out of the lantern. You say camp? Yeah, that's where we're headed. There's more people there. We're almost there, come on. We're mostly latecomers. People that try to get into Atlanta too late, like you. We can get so in, so we set up camp here. You're just camping out here? Is that safe? Yeah, we got some cars for shelter, and we all take turns keeping watch at night. I figure if we stick close to the city, they'll be able to find us when the government sorts all this mess out. Here we are. Holy shit! Rick! Dad! Oh, thank God. Ah, I was so worried about you. Good to see you, man. Oh my God, Shane! He helped us get here. We wouldn't have made it without him. I guess I owe you more than than I'll ever be able to repay. Rick, please, it was nothing. I didn't make up for letting you get shot like that. Man, that wasn't your fault. Besides, I'm fine now. Fair enough. Let me show you around. Where'd you get this, Tom Glenn? I got some candy bars for the kids, some soap detergent, a couple of rolls of toilet paper. Great. Mick Glenn, that's Alan. Oh, hounding him for supplies. Alan's wife Donna's around here somewhere. They got twins, Billy and Ben. They're hel hellions. That's Dale up there keeping watch. That's his camper. Jim is over there eating. That's Carol and her daughter Sophia sitting on the back of the car. This is Amy and Andrea. They're sisters. You guys see Donna and the twins? We're right here. What? Oh, new arrival. This is Lori's husband. My word, that's the best news I've heard all month. 
Shane, darling, come with me. These two have got some catching up to do. Yeah. It's now nighttime. I'm so glad you saved this for me. I felt naked without it. Rick has his ring on. Is he asleep? Yeah, finally. He can't sleep anymore unless he knows I'm right next to him. I never really had to slip away from him like that. I usually just lie there and look at him. He's... Been through a lot. Yeah, I'm sorry you left you, Rick. Laura, please, I understand the circumstances. You thought Atlanta would be safer. Carl, I would have done the same. They said people are going to stay at the hospital and be evacuated us from what, from what you told me. They must have abandoned the hospital less than a week after we left. We did what's right for little Carl. I'm just glad Shane was around to help you get here. I didn't even think I would have found the way down here without him, let alone survive after, what, after we got here. Her hand! That's just from the IV. It's not a big deal. Oh... Enough up there? So far, that's all we we need. Luckily, those things haven't come at us in any numbers. Most we've had at one time is three. The thing is, none of us really sleep anymore. As soon as we hear one of the shots, we're up, ready to defend this place. We only got two guns: Shane's pistol and Dale's rifle. But we've got shovels around this camp that we can hit them with. Work so far. They don't even, they don't come very often. Rick. You're shaking. The past two days, I've been so worried about finding you and Carl again here in one place. Peace. I haven't had the time to be scared. Rick is sleeping with his family. Rick gets up. Morning, partner. Hey, man. I thought you'd still be asleep. You kept watch most of the night, didn't you? When it took, up, took over about halfway through, but I don't sleep much anyway. You want to take a shower? The one in Dale's camper still works. It's pound water, but it's better than nothing. Man, I'd love a shower. Our had already kissed that luxury goodbye. Don't linger too long. You and I are going hunting today. Gets out of the shower. Oh, hey. I didn't see you there, man. You don't scare me to death. So, you're Lori's husband, huh? Yeah. I don't want to stir nothing up, and you got to understand this has nothing to do with your wife. She did nothing but talk about you while you were gone. She worried about you. She felt bad about leaving you. But then, that Shane, he's a good man. He helps out a lot around here. He took care of your wife, but he's not glad you're back. He's had his eye on Lori for as long as I've known him. I appreciate the advice, but Shane's my friend. He was just keeping her safe. I, I don't have to worry about anything. I wouldn't trust him around my wife. I'll keep that in mind. Rick's, Rick goes out and sees Lori and Shane together laughing. Crazy old man. You ready? We should get going if we're going to find anything. I'm ready when you are. I'll take the. I'll take those, hon. Got them really good. They're a bit funky. Uh-huh. Don't you have some mammals to try to shoot? That's the plan. Love you. I love you, too. Be careful. Carl, what are you doing? We're by Sophia's car. We're going to play in the dirt. All right. I'm going to go wash our clothes with Donna. And Carl, you make sure you and Sophia keep an eye on Ellen. If he, if he tells you to get in the RV, you do it. Okay, Mama. Don't worry, Amy and Andrea are going to watch the kids. I think I have a laundry duty. You're damn right. Not in front of the kids. Oh, bite me. Stay safe. Always. I can't wait to see how these things smell with the new detergent Glenn got from the city. That stuff Dale had in the RV just wasn't working. It made the clothes smell better, but not by much. Jesus Christ, we two listen to yourselves. You're excited about trying out new detergent. This is such bullshit. Damn, Donna. We're just we're not throwing a party. I'm just looking forward to the possibility of clean smelling clothes. That'd be a welcome change at this point. I just don't understand why we're the ones doing laundry while they get go off and hunt. When things get back to normal, I wonder if we'll still be allowed to vote. 
Are you serious? I don't know about you, but I can't shoot a gun. I never even tried to. To be honest, I wouldn't trust any of these guys to wash my clothes. Rick couldn't do it with a washing machine. He'd be lost out here. This isn't about women's rights. It's about being realistic and doing what needs to be done. Whatever! Do you think my daddy would come back too? Ain't your daddy dead? Yeah, but so was your daddy and he came back. My daddy was sick. Just sick. We had to leave him in the hospital back home so he could get better. He wasn't dead. Oh. I miss my dad. I thought I'd take Lori and Carl down here to her parents' home and come back. I thought this thing would be over in a week. I didn't want to explain stolen guns to the captain when I got back. Well, if you had seen the place the way I did, you wouldn't have been so worried about the rules. I don't think I'll ever be the same again. Don't say that, man. This won't last. I don't know, man. It looks bad. Well, well, I'm glad you brought the guns. We just had Dale's rifle on my sidearm. Someone had to keep watch with the rifle at all times. And it's hard as hell to hunt with a pistol. Just about all we had to eat was canned goods Glenn brought back from the city. Man, what's with that guy risking his life every day just to get toilet paper and candy bars? I mean, it's a great help. And he did save my life, but damn. I have no idea. He seems to know how to get in and out. Get out before they gang up on him. It's Russell Russell. Shh. The walker eating a deer. It doesn't even know we're here. You think we could get the deer away from it? You think it'd be safe to eat? You don't have to constantly keep watch. There's not, they're not that fast. You glance in all directions in five minutes will do it. I'm just being thorough. So, entertain us, Lori. How'd you meet Rick? I think that job's been dated enough, though. Me putting you both to sleep. Come on, I can use a good nap. Alright, but he warned you. Rick's brother, Jeff, is my age. I'm two younger than Rick. I met his brother senior year of high school. It started with the brother? I'm all ears. It's nothing like that. We were friends. Jeff invited me to a New Year's party. Apparently Rick had been made chaperone by your, your parents. Who were attending a party elsewhere. I met Rick there. He was going to college for police administration. Everything about him was interesting. You know why it's like the time of year when you're alone? I hung on every word. Everything about him was perfect. And at midnight, I had someone to kiss. We really hit it off. He kept in touch while he finished college, and I touched him to last more, more than a year of mine. I didn't. After college was out of the way, I moved back home, and that's when Rick and I got ser really serious. The rest is pretty self-explanatory. See, pretty dull. You gotta say, you two look good together. Rick and I are the most compatible people on Earth. We are perfect for each other. Come on, let's get back to camp. Look out! Ah! Move, Donna! Damn it! Move! Deal comes and chops the walker's head off. I couldn't, I couldn't, are you saying my life? No, Ugh. mention it. Mom! Dropping firewood when I heard the screams and I... It's still alive! I don't even want to think about the disease that thing must carry. I'm not eating any of that deer, and neither is my family. Yeah, I think you're right. You ever seen one up close like this? A couple of times, but not for this long. Without attacking me. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> Rick axes it. I was going to wait for him to come after us. <laughs> the camp! Lori! Are you and Carl okay? What happened? The king of the woods tried to kill us. It almost got done up Dale cut his head off, and it was still alive. They had to shoot it. Oh, God, Rick. It was awful. Let's get the thing to the woods and out of the way. Everything okay now, hon? 
Jane stares at Rick and Lori with a disapproving look. It's nighttime at the camp. Psst. Jesus, man, don't sneak up on me like that. Sorry, I was just trying to get up here without waking anyone up. Well, next time throw a rock at me or something. You scare me half to death, especially after what happened earlier today. Yeah, that actually what I came here to talk to you about. Oh, we need to move camp. It's not smart to be this close to a city full of those things. Just two goddamn dancers. Are you crazy? What happens when the government starts cleaning this mess up? We'll have to start with the cities. They'll find out us faster if we stay here. When are they coming, Shane? Tomorrow? Next week? It's getting really damn cold out here. It's only going to get worse. Not to mention what happened yesterday. It's too risky to stay too, so damn close to them. Too risky to get somewhere else. The, the fires are keeping us warm. There's plenty of fire one in this area. We'll be fine here. This is a blessed place to be for the rescue. What makes you so sure we're even going to be rescued? John almost died yesterday. What if it was one of the kids? What if it was Carl? No one was prepared for this, Shane. You think those girls know how to fight? If we go someplace safer, maybe we won't need to be rescued so soon. I'd rather be able to get a good night's sleep every once in a while than have to sit up at night, hoping the government is still intact and is going to find us. No, damn it! We're staying right here. We're safe here. Yesterday is one of the very few isolated incidents. This is the safest place to be. Rick, we can protect these people. We'll be rescued here. If we go hide in the country, it can take them months to find us. We've got to stay here. Okay. Feel that, sir, and that's it. It's the best thing for us. Fine. We'll stay. But if it's going to try and hold it out here, we're going to need more guns. If Donna had been carrying one yesterday, she could have just turned around and shot that thing. Everyone here is going to how on are we going to find enough guns for that? I'll figure something out. Can you keep it down up there? Some of us are trying to sleep. Next day. Hey, Glenn. Wait up. What can I do for you, Rick? When you go into town, have you ever seen a gun store or anything like that? No, but I never really go into the city that far. Why do you ask? Well, I'm not thinking if anyone was hurt. Or into the city's protection. There wouldn't have been much looting if they, everything was being owned by the government. When everything went to shit, there's no way anyone would have time to break into one of the gun stores. Those places are usually barred up. No one would have been able to get through that without being attacked and eaten. That does make a whole lot of sense. While I don't know exactly where a gun store may be, I think I know someone who Jim, you gotta help us out, man. Do you remember any gun stores close to the edge of town here in Atlanta? Gun, st gun stores? Corner of Pleasant, 38th Street. Thanks, Jim. Come on, I got a map in my car. Got the beast here somewhere. I know we need guns, but have, why do you have to go? This is your third day here. I don't want to have to worry about you again. Daddy, please don't go. You don't have to worry, son. Real careful. This has to be done. We can all be safe. When I get back, I'll teach you how to shoot a gun. You want to know how to shoot a gun, don't you? I guess. No way. This is too young to shoot a gun. We'll argue about that when I get back. Don't worry. I'll be here before you can notice. I'm gone. Glenn will keep me safe. How many times have you gone into town? I'm back fine. I just don't understand. Why can he go alone? Why do you have to go with him? How many guns do you think Glenn can carry? Come on, Be reasonable. Got it. Be careful. Don't worry. I'll be fine. I love you. Hey, I love you too. What's up with Jim? Is he okay? Well, remember when I told you we had a guy at camp that actually made Avalanche alive? Yeah. Well, Jim's that guy. At the at the time, you had just to told me you thought Laurie and Carl were in there, and I was trying to give you hope. The thing is, Jim got out of the city, but he saw his entire family torn apart before he did. Oh, he told the story once. It was like they were shielding him from the army of zombies that had surrounded them. His wife, his sister, her husband, between them all they had, like, 
five kids. I can't really remember, but I think his mom might have been there too. He only made his way through the crowd because those monsters were busy eating everyone else. He said it happened so fast he didn't even realize what was, what was going on until he made it to the safety. Damn it! What? Jim's gun store is five blocks from where I found you. I've never gone that far in. There's no way we can do this. Follow me. I've got an idea. Come on, this way. The city is that way. Where are we going? Trust me. You don't want to know. Help me drag, drag it away from the tree. Um, what are we doing? Those things don't seem too smart yet. I've never seen them mistake one of them for one of us. I've seen a couple of those things that I think were alive from a distance. So I've been thinking, what if it, what it could be that helps them tell us apart to be close to the fella seals it it's the smell now i've seen some of them missing half the face they're up and moving but by all indications they're not operating at peak performance so i'm definitely not saying they're like bloodhounds that could tell us apart by smell maybe it's as simple as the fact that we don't think like stink like them i gotta think of something to do with our smell we got both on we've got we've both got arms and legs it should be easy for up, but they'll never attack each other. <laughs> Rick chops his hand off. You rub this on your clothes and then stick it in your pocket. I think a few pieces of each of us. Each of us ought to do it. On pukes. Yeah. Sorry, I just wasn't expecting this at all this morning. I'm used to the smell of the city, but getting it up close like this is a totally different story. Well, if I had known I'd be doing this today. I wouldn't have gone out of bed. We got to give this a shot, though. Don't let anything get close to your face. All these things are so nasty that I hate to think what would happen if you got something in your mouth. Their bites are fatal, and that's just make them making contact with broken skin. I don't think I'll be rubbing this shit on my face anytime soon. I hope this works. You and me both. I'm going to feel really stupid if we did this. Nothing. Ugh. Sorry about that, you know. If your smell theory is right, I'm gonna be much safer than you. I need to scratch my nose. Well, let's see if this is gonna work. Nothing so far. <sighs> no, no, no way, this isn't gonna work. It just isn't. Glenn, listen to me. If it just slapped my hand away, it want me to leave it, it alone. This is going to work. Look at it. It's not coming after us. What a gloomy goddamn day. I don't know about you, but I was getting sick of all that sunshine contradicting what was going on down here. At least this is consistent. You ready for this? Not really. Me neither. God, you do this every day. Yep. Map Pleasant Street is this way. So far, so good. They don't seem to notice that we're talking. They make sounds too. Maybe they can't tell the difference. We should go this this way. We're almost there. We've never been this far into the city. Rust. It's worse than we thought. Just stay calm. Don't freak out. We're going to be fine. Look, there it is. One second. What's that for? We can carry more guns with it. Oh, that makes sense. So, how are we going to get in? This door is made of wood. Rick puts his hat, starts ha hacking away at the door. We need to hurry. Those things were looking at me while I hacked away at the door. I think their notes were different. We're at a disadvantage, not knowing how smart they are at all. What should we get? A little of everything, as much as we can fit in the car. Make sure we got a lot of ammo. We need to make sure we didn't gr don't grab anything that won't work in the guns we get. Yeah, that's a good point. You think we got enough? For a while, at least. Let's go. Shit, it's starting to rain! Rick Hatch used hacks a zombie in the way. What was that? You think they won't notice that? Hurry! We're not gonna last long in the rain. Lightning strikes. 
Shit. What? What's wrong? Look at them. The rain's washing the smell off. <sighs> Shit! We're never gonna make it. Just run. Come on. Rip! Cart crashes. Get the cart upright. Grab as many guns as you can. Hurry! Or shoots as a zombie. Or walker, I should say. Oh god! Oh god! Ricky is slashing at the walkers. One walker bites at Rick's jacket. Ah! Rick starts using he starts using his axe against it. Come on, Rick! Hurry, we won't make it. Rick starts 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 shooting it. Shooting again. We're almost home free. Yeah. I think we're gonna make it. Keep running. Okay, ah, uh, I think we lost them. Let's take a breather. Rick? Oh, thank God. Oh, jeez. Oh, man. I thought it had been bitten. Oh, shit. Damn. I guess we really lucked out this time. Well, let's get these guns back to camp before it gets dark. Yeah. Glenn? Please don't tell Lori how close we came. Got nothing to worry about, Lori. Rick can handle himself. You've seen him. Seen what he's gotten through already. He and Glenn will be back for you know it. I just... I just wish he hadn't gone. Damn it, why did you put me through this again? Come back to camp. It's too cold to be out in the rain. Come on, Sting. I hear it's gonna make him come back any sooner. I'll keep you company. Sting, don't. You got to stop. Rick is back now. He's alive, and he's my husband. You got to stop it. But what about that night, when we, on the road, down here? That night... That night... Was... A mistake. We see... Vulture... Nibbling at a walker. Gunshots make it fly away. That's it. You're getting a lot better down a couple of weeks ago. You were all over the place. Now you've nailed almost half your targets. Look at me. I'm a regular sharpshooter. Keep it up. You're not that far off. I'm nowhere near as good as Andrea, but thanks anyway. I think the same could be said about Shane and me. People are shooting guns. How's it going? Oh, oh, hey, Rick. What's going on? I just gave Donna some pointers. She's really coming along, though. I don't think anyone's surprised us like Andrea here. Yeah, as far as I can tell, she's not cheating, and the wind can't be blowing that many cans over. Looks like we've got a phenomenon on our hands. Oh, boys. It's just plenty of cheating. It's not brain surgery. Dang. Maybe for you, but try to tell my wife how easy. Oh, be nice. Hey, Carl, you ready? I'm gonna go shoot cans. Okay. Thanks for keeping an eye on him. As long as you're back here to help me up before we leave, I'll consider us even. Nobody better be using my gun. Carl, slow down. Lori gives Shane an evil look. Larry gives Rick an evil look. Rick is his Carl shoots the can. Great job, son. You're doing great. Doing just great. I'm so proud of you. Thanks, Dad. Does this mean I get to carry a gun now like everyone else? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Okay, everybody. That's do it for today. Start grabbing everything up. You're all doing great. I think everyone here is capable of defending themselves at least at close distance. You should all be pleased with your progress. Rick and I were a bit worried when we started. Three weeks ago, you've, you've impressed us both. Let's start back to the camp. It's going to start getting dark. Also, before we go, we've got an announcement to make. I think if any of you have been paying attention to Carl on the shooting range, you've seen that he knows how to handle a gun. I know he's young, but just for safety's sake, he's going to be carrying his own gun from now on. I know some of you... My wife clearly objected to this, but when I said everyone, I will be relying on you all to help me keep an eye on him. 
needs to keep his gun holster at all times. If he takes it out once without danger present, I'll be taking it away. Please let me know if you see him so much as acting like he's going to take it out. Damn it, Lori. Will you stop? He's safer this way. Is he? How can you be so sure? He's seven years old, for Christ's sake. This is not a good idea. But I guess the end of the world means I've got no longer got a say in parenting my own son. Jit, Lori. You're overacting. The first hint of him treating like a toy and I'll never let him touch it again. It's in his holster. The safety on. It's just for emergencies. Whatever. I wish this place wasn't so damn far from camp. Would you rather a pack of those monsters found the gunshots right to us? Got a point. Welcome back. You guys all expert marksmen now? Just a couple of us. You could probably use a little practice too, you know. You don't need to stay here and guard the camp if we're not here. That's true, but I hate to come back and find a couple of dead guys digging, around, digging through our stuff, sticking up the place. The long walk there isn't very enticing either. A little exercise isn't a bad thing. All exercise ever does is make you tired. Who wants to be tense, terrified, miserable, cold, and tired? Look at three of them carrying on in the front guy and every and everyone. It's unchristian. That was being judgmental if I remember correctly. <laughs> Good one. Lord tells me Donna just won't shut up about you and the girls living together in that camper. She started right after we got back from target practice a couple of days ago and hasn't let up since. Pretty much the only thing she talked to me about since I left Carl from practicing with us. Donna ain't showing a lick of gratitude for me saving her life. I don't see how Alan puts up with her. Those poor boys think about how she's going to be raising them twins. You know, I figured you've earned the right to have two pretty young women to keep your company of all... Your camping gear, we'd be screwed. The shower alone has made you one of my favorite people. Oh my gosh, I'm not doing anything with these poor girls, to be honest. I'm an old man. My plumbing ain't what it used to be. Just after losing my wife not two months ago, it's nice having them around. They keep the place clean. It reminds me what it's like to like with her around. You don't have to explain yourself to us. It's your business. Donna's just an old housewife who doesn't have soap operas to keep her small mind occupied. Don't let her get to you. Let me take another turn, Rick. I'm rested up. Let's just go back to camp, fellas. I think we got enough for tonight about the, with the cookout. Are you sure? Even with that deer sheen shot your stay feeling our bellies will probably get mighty cold tonight. God damn it, Rick! We give it a fucking rest already? I'm sick to death of you hearing your shit. I know it's cold. I know it's getting colder. You're gonna be fine. I'm not moving my the fucking camp, okay? I don't want to hear anything more about it. That boy's got problems. Dale, this thing is working perfectly. I don't know how we'd cook any meat without it. I don't leave home without my spas. You never know when something will come in handy or out on the road. That reminds me, I don't know what most of you were doing for a living before all this shit started happening. Like you, Dale, did you just travel? Pretty much, I was a salesman for almost almost 40 years. I spent most of my life behind a desk on the phone. Each week after I retired, the wife and I bought the camper and I set out to see America. We've been on the road the better part of two years. When everything started happening, we were at a campsite about 80 miles south of here, coming back from Florida. The news hit us a little late. We didn't even know what was going on. My wife never left the campsite. After I buried her, I set out for Atlanta. I had some cousins there. Rio said it was the safest place nearby. Of course, when it got there, it had already been blocked off. And the army was still trying to butt back the hordes inside. I ended up here. Way to Atlanta, I found Amy and Andrea broke down at gas, gave them a ride. Andrea was dragging me back to college classes for starting in a few days. I was a physical education major, a junior. As, as far away as I lived, I should have just flown back, but we've always enjoyed our little bonding trips. I was a clerk at a law firm, but job is one of the few things I don't miss. I was a pizza delivery boy in Bacon. 
Georgia. I was swimming in debt and wouldn't give anything to get out of it. Thing is, now that it's all gone, I'd gladly take it all back if everything could be back to normal. I mean, who wouldn't really? If I was in bad shape, about to lose my apartment, my car, I was going to have to bite the bullet and go crawling back to my parents for help. I never wanted to talk to them again. Eh, now that I know I couldn't talk to them if I wanted to, I don't want to. I was a shoe salesman. I ran a store in the mall. I wasn't anything spectacular, but I paid the bills. Well, most of them anyway. Let's just say the dip part of Glenn's story hits pretty close to me. We lived in Gainesville. It's about 50 miles from here, just like everyone else. Else here. We came to Atlanta a little late. Glenn and Dale and the girls had already set up this camp when we got here. Our car broke down in the way and we walked here. Piece of crap never worked. Mechanic. Get some more of that stuff, Alan. Sure, Rick. Just gonna go bad if we don't eat it. Y'all know about me, small town cop from Kentucky. I only ever shot my gun a couple times. Never had anyone, though. The last time I was on duty, I sure did try. Got shot, was in a coma for a while. When I woke up to this. I was going, going out of my mind worrying about Lori and Carl. Jane here took care of them for me. I felt so bad about Rick getting shot. I was up visiting him when Lori told me she was going to come here to stay with her parents. I couldn't let her go alone. It was getting pretty bad out there. Of course, we had no idea how bad it would get. The hospital was supposed to stay open, so we figured Rick would be okay. We were going to get, go back for him. We're kind of got stranded here. All's well that ends well. What about you, Carol? What, what? How about you? Oh, um, hold on. Ugh. Sophia's father was the breadwinner. I sold some Tupperware of catalogs from time to time, but it was really just so to friends and neighbors. I wouldn't have considered it a job. My husband was a car salesman. He used to say he could talk and he wanted to anything. He tried to talk to me into marrying him. He talked me into staying with him after. He watched his parents die right right after everything started to happen. He couldn't deal with it. He just sort of gave up on life. He, you know, after he was gone, Sophia and I came here to stay with my sister. We figured it'd be worth the try to stay with someone we knew. We never got into the city, thankfully. Well, I gotta pee. Does anyone need anything while I'm in here? More napkins? I think there's still more left. Yeah! <laughs> Amy, no! Zombie bits Amy. Rick and Shane start shooting the walkers. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh, Amy! Oh god! What do I do? We got to try to stop the. We got to try to stop the bleeding. Ah. Uh, I'm sorry. Ah, she's gone. Heads up, Rick! That wasn't the only one! Lori, get the kids in one of the cars and stay there! Come on! Jesus, Jesus Christ! Come on, it's not safe here! No, no, no! Ugh. Come on, there's no telling how many there are. Beak! Lori tries grabbing a gun, but she slips her hands. Carl shoots the walker instead. <laughs> the walker's heading towards Carol, just standing there. But Glenn shoots it. Are you okay? Yeah! Is the one alright? Oh, yes. Yeah, we're, we're fine. Dale, we got to get her up and get her inside the camper. Rick's still shooting his gun, so is Alan and Jim. A walker gets on top of Jim. Jim starts beating with his gun. My family! My family! You killed them! Jim, stop. It's over. It killed my family. I'm so sorry, Andrew. I'm so sorry. Oh, Dale. Andrew shoots Amy in the face. I can't let her come back like that. I'm sorry I was mad at you. I was so stupid. If something had happened to you tonight, I... I know. 
okay. Jim! Jim, oh my god, you've been bitten! This? This nothing. A scratch! Everyone is sit, sit, standing around and grave. She always had something to say. That's one thing I loved about Amy. When we were all too shook up, or preoccupied, or just plain scared, she said something. She made us laugh, line up the mood no matter what. I... I wish you were here now. We may not have gotten along, but I loved her. I love everyone here. We all lean on each other. We all need each other. This is hard on all of us. But she seemed to take it in a stride. We could all learn something from her. She was a pretty girl. Smart, too. She should have been going to college. Living her life, being young, being happy. This should never have happened. She didn't deserve this. Nobody deserves this. Came into, she came into my life at a time when I was ready to die. She gave me back into my will to live, and I'll never be able to thank her for that. I'll miss her. You all miss her. It's not going to be the same. Andrea? You need more blankets. No, I'm fine. You should cool your face down a little. Thanks. Boss in my garage, first guy I saw attacked, he turned in a couple hours. No one's ever lasted more than a day after being bitten. Guess I'm lucky. Maybe we won't turn, nobody knows anything for sure. Yeah. If you need anything, just give us a yell, someone will come get me if I don't hear. Thanks, thanks for checking in on him, hon. All the other girls are too scared to get near him when he won't let any of them, the men touch him. How is he? Worse! If what Dale said about his wife is true, he hasn't got long to go. Dale's wife turned about half a day. Jim's going through the same stuff, just taking longer for him. He says his whole body is freezing, but he, he'd almost burn you if he touched him. He's still going by his wits, though. We'll see. Maybe it won't happen to him. Yeah. No shooting today, Carl. Just watch us and stay quiet. Oh, Dad. Why? You don't want to scare our dinner away. Sorry. Jane shoots a rabbit. Good one. Be more of those and we'll be set. Jane walks away. We don't have to get as much as usual, Dad. Amy's dead and Jim's too sick to eat. I know, son. I know. God damn it, Rick! It's not my fucking fault! Like hell. Like hell it isn't. I told you this was gonna happen. We're not safe here. How many more people have to die before you realize that? If I thought we could survive on our own, I'd leave the rest of us here and take Carl and Lori with me. We need to get out of here, Shane. Let's siphon what little class we have out of the cars and into Dale's camper. And go today, right now. Let's just get away from the city. Find some place safe. Think, Rick. We'll be lost out there. The army is going to drive through here any day now if supplies and shelter. And all this will just go away. I don't know what the risk being out in the country. I don't want to be risked being left behind. Where are you, ba what are you basing that on? What indication do we have that we're not the only survivors? Will they attack on the camp? Are, are they hunting in packs now? We know nothing about them. We're not safe. Girl! Carl storms off, by the way. Adria, if there's anything I can do. Dale and Adria are seeing my bed. <coughs> no. We can't do that to you. You could start getting better. This would be murder. Oh, no, you don't understand. I can't feel it coming. This, you gotta do this. Ah. <coughs> I can actually cough in my life because he actually coughs. Please, this, they have to do this for me. Talk them into it. It's the only way I'll ever be with my family again.
Bim knows what he wants to do. Bim, are you absolutely sure about this? Leave. Leave me. When I come back, baby, I'll find my family. Maybe they came back too. Maybe we can be together again. Bye, Jim. Leave Jim uh, tied to a tree. Walk away. Next day, Rick gets up. Ugh. Morning. Good morning, Dad. Hey, Rick. Let me know when you're rage and we'll go haunting. Just give me a few minutes to wake up and I'll be ready to go. Can I go too? Sorry, son. Not this time. Come on, Rick. Why not? Why not let him come along? Cause we need to talk, Shane. What? What do we need to have to talk about? What the hell do you think? Shane punches Rick. It wasn't my motherfucking fault. You son of a bitch! Lori slaps Shane. Stay away from him, you fucking lunatic! What the fuck is wrong with you, Lori? Ah. Uh. Everyone looks at Shane. Ah! Fuck this! Shane storms away. <sighs> Shane, wait! What's happening to us? Laura, are you okay? It's never going to be the same again. We're never going to be normal. Just look at us! Shane, stop! Stop! Shane aims the gun at Rick. What? What do you want? Got to rip my heart right out of my chest! Shane! Jesus! What are you talking about? Be careful with that! Go ahead! Rip it out, Rick! I don't fucking need it anymore! Take it! Take it! Shane, ah! Uh, can you please just put the gun down? You really did it for me, buddy! You really did it! Oh, yes, you did! I'm nothing now, Rick! Nothing! I got nothing, Rick! No friends! No family! No respect! No fucking life! This fucking world, this fucking godforsaken world of shit! There's nothing for me here, Rick! Nothing! I thought I could make it! I thought I could wait, hold out! Wait till they came and rescued us! They would have brought us nice beds, and hot showers, and fresh clothes! They were coming, Rick! We're gonna be okay! We still are, Shane. Everything's gonna be okay, fine. I can't live like this, Rick! I thought I could, but I can't! I thought I could, and I did everything. It was going so good. You came around eventually. I know it. She would have. What? Everything was so perfect. Until you came back? God damn it, Shane! Stop this! No, Rick! This is the only way. This is what has to happen. You were meant to come back. You were meant to live! Please, Shane! Don't do this! Before Shane does anything, he is shot in the neck. Don't hurt my daddy again! Girl! <laughs> Shane falls to the ground. Oh, son! It's not the same as killing the dead ones, Daddy! It never should be, son. It never should be, son. The end of Walking Dead, Volume 1. Days gone by. See ya for the next volume and the next issue. Goodbye.